Hello again, welcome back to another video. Sun is shining, it's a long weekend again here in the UK, we've got Monday off. I feel like shooting some film. I'm going to be using this, I haven't used it in a while, this is my Pentax 645. This is the, the early version, the, the non-autofocus version, the ends onwards were autofocus. I have featured this in the videos before. As you can see it's got 120 film insert, it doesn't have interchangeable backs, uh, it uses inserts. And I'm going to be shooting some film through it, and the film I'm going to be using is this stuff. Let's see, I'll look up the rows, rows of this. This is Shanghai GP3 100. Are you going to focus or not? Come on. Maybe it's too close. Uh, Shanghai GP3, and this is a 220 film. It is still fresh. So it's uh, January 2024 as the expiry date. Made in China. This is the instructions inside. So I've got two rolls of it. One I'm putting through this camera. And the second roll, this one, I'm going to put through the 6.7. Because that takes 220 film as well. So here's the box that this one came in. And you can see inside there's some instructions. It's usually Sunny 16 rule. It's rated ISO 100. They recommend using 125th, which is again sunny 16, and then there's a chart for development times using different kinds of developers. So pretty standard information there. But yeah, obviously somebody in China has got a machine for winding 220 film. The difference between 220 and 120 film is that whereas 120 film has backing paper its entire length, this only has backing paper at the beginning and the end. So the bit in the middle is just plain film and uh, it means that you can either have a camera that can accept both usually by turning a switch like in the case of the Pentax 67 or there are different backs which is common amongst most of them because the pressure plate is going to be different because there's no paper um, on, on the back of the film so to make sure it lines up and it's in focus there's usually a different back very very cheap to buy I managed to pick up four of these you see this one's clearly identified as a 220 back I picked up four of these for 40 pounds so they were 10 pounds each these are normally selling for well they're asking 40 pounds each for them so I thought that was quite a good deal I got four of them and one of them yeah this one's even actually got film in it and you can see there's a start marker for loading it there and this one's actually at the start mark so I don't think this film's been exposed. The advantage of 220 film, see there's backing paper, is you get double the amount of exposures. So in this camera I'll get 30 exposures rather than the, the normal 15. In the end version you get uh, an extra shot on 120 and an extra two shots on 220. So there's some colour film, that's old Kodak um, Professional. I haven't got a clue what speed it is or anything like that, so that'll be fun to try and figure out. A bit of lomography going on there. But yeah, this is the, uh, the Shanghai film, a standard 120, 220 wrapper. The spool's the same, it's just that this backing paper thing is the only real difference between them. So if I take this insert out, you just flip this up, turn it anti-clockwise, there's like a catch and then it slides out you can see the shutter inside. I love this camera, it's got a really, really bright, clear viewfinder in it. And it's a 645, so it's probably the most economical medium format to, to use. So that's a 120 back out, or insert out, they're not really backs. And here's a 221. The advantage of inserts, of course, is if you've got an assistant, they can be loading them. But you have to use the whole roll, that's the downside. You can't change film stock mid-roll, which is the downside to film inserts. So, there's only a little instruction down here. You can see there's quite a fat sort of image down here. And there's a sort of skinny image on this side. So, there's no rewinding with 120 and 220 film. It just moves from one spiral to the next. So, if I take that out of there, this side will flick up as well. So the old reel sits in the middle like so. So that then becomes your take-up spool. 
you will notice I think there is an arrow somewhere on here that tells you shows you which way this turns. I think it only turns one way actually. Yeah, and it's, it's got gears locked so it turns that way. And your fresh film goes in this side. So you open this up, I'm probably gonna struggle with this. I can't open packets anymore. Right. My hands have got no strength in them anymore. And take it out of the wrapper, make sure you keep it nice and tight. And you can see GP300 220 film. So we need to peel this somehow and find the end of it. This is just keeping the film on the roll, making sure it's nice and tight. And yeah, that'll just peel off. I've already put batteries in the camera, it takes six in the grip. So I've moved some uh, some Duracells in there. Good cameras actually. Program mode, aperture priority, manual metering, TTL flash, multiple exposures. It's got everything you could ever need really. Right, this goes in and we want the film to be pacing outwards. So it's going to go in that way around. So we put the film into here, making sure we're keeping it wrapped tight. And then we drop that catch back in there. And yep, this is called the, the leader, just like in 35mm film. We pull that across. And then we have to get this paper into the slot in the middle of this spool, like so. And then we turn. And hopefully, he says, it will start to pull this leader across. We want it to be fairly tight. We don't want this getting loose, this roll, because otherwise the film's going to get exposed. Bearing in mind there's no backing paper to protect it. So as we turn this cog, oh, I said no strength. You can see that the paper starts to move across. Like so. And then the film will be coming across here as well and then there should be a start there we go there's some arrows marked for start so you line that up with the orange mark on the side on either side like so and then this goes into the camera so it just lines up with that and then you got to push it in and turn it so then it's it's locked in there say the batteries go in the grip down here i can quickly show you that so little button you've got to push down here then you see your batteries you've got three on one side three on the other again you can have spares of these and have your assistant just swap the batteries out if you're doing a big photo shoot, proper one. Right. Uh, it's loaded to number one. You can see one in there. It's in auto, saying a 15th. Uh, this side we can select the mode and the ISO. The ISO isn't 400. Set the ISO to 100. Set the mode. That's program. So I'm just going to leave it in program. You can have it in the, there are different ones. Auto. And you leave, make sure the lens is in A. Uh, I do anyway, then you can uh, you can do it manually, but what's the point? It's got program and um, aperture priority on board as well. Got exposure compensation. This is illuminated on here. I can't remember what the LED one does. I think it turns the display off inside because it shows you the shutter speed and the aperture. It does have focusing aids on the screen, which is really nice. Interchangeable lenses. This is the uh, kind of standard lens. This is the... Uh, 
I've also got the wide angles. I've got a 50 and a 150 as well. You can see the huge mirror inside of it. It is noisy, but uh, it's not too bad. It winds the film on. Like I say, there's no rewinding when you're finished. You just take the insert out and the film will move from the bottom roll to the top. So there you go, folks. Video for today. Weather's nice. Long weekend. While the sun's shining, get out there and take some pictures. It's been a long, old, dark winter. And, uh, yeah. I'm shooting this. So I've got, um, what have I got on this? 30 exposures on this. Um... So I get that developed. It's black and white. You can do it in Rodinal. Uh, that can go back into there for security's sake. There's, there's a, the, uh, I've got a few of these 120 backs as well. These are quite expensive, but the 221s have been really cheap. On most camera systems, the 221s are very cheap. There's not a lot of 220 film about. Oh, that's not in right. But yeah, 220 film. On a Pentax 645. Interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Comments, questions, queries, etc. down below. You can always email me at thephotographersbag at gmail.com. Check me out on Instagram as well. That's my. I tend to put the photographs on Instagram because I don't have a computer. I think they're so last century. 15 years working in IT. I don't really want to see another computer ever again in my life. So I'm not into video editing and putting music on and all that kind of rubbish. Um, so results from this I will post on Instagram when I get the film developed. I haven't used it yet, as you said, I've only just put the film in it. So it's not going to be one of those ones where you listen to music and see nice pictures. Turn it off would be an idea. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Have a great weekend.